Hello, everyone. Welcome to Kiss Time with Jesus, brought to you by COPUSA. I am your host, Mila Eche. Hi, 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 children. Hi, 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 hi children, children of the Lord. Of the Lord. Amen. Amen. You are all welcome, precious ones at home. You are welcome to Kiss Time with Jesus. It is a beautiful day today, a day that the Lord has made that you and I need to rejoice and be glad in it. Um, grab mommy, grab daddy to have a seat and let us have some fun through learning, through learning. Um, today, it has pleased the Lord that some of our precious children has to join, zoom in here with me and for us to um, talk and learn about the word of God. And I'm sure you've also what, um, have you also seated, getting ready with your Bibles and pen and paper and snack to learn the word of God. You are all welcome. Um, today, we are going to learn about something, a topic I love so much, a topic I love so much. But before we do that, we will uh, let the precious ones here to introduce themselves and then we'll go on with our memory verse. So let's start. Hi, my name is James Ose Ampofu from the PIWC New York region. Hi, my name is Declan Afoy from Cleveland District. Hi, my name is Darren Afoy from Cleveland District. Hi, my name is Esther Morgan from Patterson District. Hi, my name is Joel Morgan and I'm from Patterson District. Hello, my name is Benedict Yabal from Cincinnati District. You are all welcome, precious ones. You are all welcome to Case Time with Jesus, brought to you by COPUSA. As we said earlier on, we are going to learn our memory verse. We are going to learn our memory verse for today. It is always good for us, precious ones, to learn our memory verse. So our memory verse um, for today will be taken from Acts chapter 7, verse 32, Acts chapter 7, verse 32. And um, if you don't know, um, if you don't have um, your Bible, you can go ahead and get your Bibles as we read. Um, and I read it. I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Moses trembled with fear and did not dare to look. Amen. 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 So, precious ones at home, do not forget to learn the memory verse for the week. And then when you get it right, without not looking, you can share with mommy and daddy and friends and loved ones of a new memory verse that you have learned today. So, memory verse for this week, Acts chapter 7, verse 32. I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, Moses trembled with fear and did not dare to look. Amen. 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 This Amen. afternoon, we are going to learn um, a very important topic. Um, the word of God, it's um, uh, the, the, the topics or the word of God, it's a place that every child needs to go and, 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 and get some words of encouragement from the Bible. And today we'll be looking at another topic in the Bible. But this topic um, will be treated, we are treating it from this book, The Apologetics for Children. It was written by our apostle, Michael Ajima Mwakon, the national head of COPUSA. Our precious ones, if you need a copy of this book, let me know and I'll get you a copy but there is so much that you can learn from this book. Um, the topic is, is he my father's God or your own God? It is, is he my father's God or your own God? That is a personal question that you need to ask yourself. If you are serving God because it's your father's God or your mommy's God, or you are serving God because he is your own God. And then the sub theme for our lesson today is the one true God, the one true God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So we'll let James read for us Acts chapter 17, verse 16 to 31. 
and then Declan will read John chapter 33, 16 to 17. But James will read, Esther will come in, and De Declan will read the John for us. Thank you, Antonina. I'm reading Acts chapter 17, verse 16 to 31 from the New International Version. And I read, while Paul was waiting for them in Athens, he was greatly distressed to see that the city was full of idols. So he reasoned in the synagogue with both Jews and God-fearing Greeks, as well as in the marketplace day by day with those who happened to be there. A group of Epicurean and Stoic philosophers began to debate with him. Some of them asked, what is this babbler trying to say? Others remarked, he seems to be advocating foreign gods. They said this because Paul was preaching the good news about Jesus and the res resurrection. Then they took him and brought him to a meeting of the Areopagus, where they said to him, may we know what this new teaching is that you are presenting. You are bringing some strange ideas to our ears and we would like to know what they mean. All the Athenians and foreigners who lived there spent their time doing nothing but talking about and listening to the latest ideas. Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus and said, people of Athens, I see that in every way you are religious. For as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription to an unknown God. So you are ignorant of the very thing you worship. And this is what I am going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. From one man, he made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole world. And he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their land. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him. Though he is not far from any one of us. For in him, we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by human design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. Amen. I just read from Acts chapter 17, verse 16 to 31 from the New International Version. Amen. Amen, James. Fantastic reading. God richly bless you. Um, Esther, Miss Esther. Yes. Um, I'm going to be reading John 3:16 through 17 because James already finished all of it. Nina. Okay. So We'll go ahead. Yes, you can read. Yeah, you can read it, John, please. Amen. I'm going to be reading from John 3, 16 through 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Amen. Amen. As to God bless you for reading um, John Forrest. God richly bless you. Precious children, as we all know, the topic for this afternoon is God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? The one true God. God in three persons. God in three persons. Today we'll be doing a little bit of an experiment. And um my children understand that Jesus is the son of God, but they don't understand that Jesus is God. That he was born as, as a human baby, right? He was born as a baby and grew up. So I'm going to use water as an example to explain the concept of Trinity. We will use the example of water to help all of us to understand the doctrine of Trinity. Water can be three different things, a liquid, a solid, and gas, but still remains water. Precious ones, I want you to keep in mind, though an explanation of the Trinity falls short of this magnificent 
reality of one God revealing himself in three persons. Ultimately, it requires faith to accept what God says in his word to be true. So precious ones, you all know that the Bible teaches us that God is the three unique person, right? Yet he is the one God, the one through God. He is the God, the father, God, the son, which is Jesus and God, the Holy Spirit. We call this the Trinity, the Trinity. This is hard for, for some of you, even me sometime, um, for me to understand it, right? What a, is a great way to use to explain how something can be in three different things yet remain what? Remain one thing. And a perfect example can be water. You can use water to explain the Trinity, you can also use an apple, right? Where we talk about the skin, the fruit in it, and then the seed in it. It's all one, it comes three in one, right? Making what, an apple. You can also use an egg, right? The yolk, the, the, the shell, and the albumin in it. It also makes what, three in one. So pretty much today, I will be talking, I'll be using the water to pretty much explain to you uh, for you to understand the concept of, 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 of Trinity. So precious ones, as you all know, um, if we take, for instance, right, let's take ice. This is ice, right? We cannot make ice. We cannot make an ice cube with oil or something else. We can only make ice with water and as you can see, you see the water dripping? That is water. If it's melting, it turns into water. Here, the ice, the solid form of water reminds us of God the Father. God the Father. Ice is hot, right? But when it sits on room temperature, it begins to melt. It begins to turn back into water. First of all, it is used to make the ice. It is solid. In the same way, God the Father is our solid foundation. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Love and faithfulness goes before you. If you read Psalm, 80, um, Psalm 89, verse 14, right? Now, when we look at liquid, just the water, right? The plain water. Liquid form of water remains us of God, reminds us of God the Son. That is Jesus, right? We use water to clean ourselves in the same way God the Son, Jesus. Jesus died on the cross to cleanse us of our sins. Jesus is also called the living water. When you read John chapter 4, Verse 10, how much more then will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleans us of all of what he cleans our conscience, right? And also what from us that leads to death, precious ones. So that what we may serve the living God Hebrews chapter what chapter nine verse fourteen. When you read that, it also tells you about the Son, the God, God the Son, the Son of God, right? So remember, the first one is what God the Father, which we use the ice cube to represent that. Now that is one part of the Trinity. Now the second part is when we use the word the water as to represent God the Son. God the Son, right? And now the last part that I want to talk about is the vapor, the gas form of water remain, reminds us of God the Holy Spirit. I want you to look at this very carefully. I have a glass of water full of what? I have um, hot water in a glass. And as you can see, you can see some vapor, right? some bubbles of water right there. Now, 
when you put a hot water, it was a plain water. We put it on, 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 on fire, it boils, we put it in the glass, the vapor that evaporates, or when you cover it, you will see a steam that con uh, converts some of this steam back into water. Now, the gas cannot be seen, right? But you can see its effect as we did when we saw the water or droplets on the side of this glass, right? Or when you feel the temperature of the glass right now, it's a little bit warm, right? Because it's been sitting for a while. In the same way, the Holy Spirit cannot be seen, but the effect of his presence, right? Can be seen and it can be felt in our lives as the Holy Spirit works to make his will known to us and to change us to become more like what? Like Jesus. I have much more to say, more than we can what? Can now even what? Bear. But when he, the Holy Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. Holy Spirit guides us into all truth. He will not speak on his mind, on his own. He will speak only when he hears. And he will tell you what is yet to come. He will bring glory to you by talking from what is mine and making it known to you. Precious ones, all these what belongs to the Father who is the what? The one true God. Precious ones. I hope that the next time you take a glass of water to drink, or you are eating a cube of ice, or you feeling um, a warm water in a glass, let this lesson remind you that God is the three in person, the one true God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Precious ones, do you want to share anything with us? I hope you enjoyed my experiment. And actually, when we get off uh, our class this afternoon, you can go home, you can just go and experiment that. Just boil. So let mommy help you boil uh, water and then and then get a cup of water and then get some ice cubes and try doing the experiment yourself it will help you to understand the trinity now the floor is open if anybody have any suggestion contribution yes james you can start sorry i was having trouble unmuting so our topic for today is the one true god and as Christians, we have a monotheistic religion, which means we worship only one God. The Greek roots for that is that monos, which means single, and theos, meaning God. So that means, like I said earlier, that us um, Christians, we worship only one God. And, and with that one God, there are many different aspects of that one God. A common misconception out there is that God has three aspects, which is omnipotent, which is all powerful, omnipresent, which is he's everywhere and omniscient, which means it's all knowing. But sometimes we forget to also realize that God is omnificent, which means that he has all the unlimited creative power in the world. And we can see that at the ending of first collusions, chapter one, verse 16, it says that for all things are made through him and for him. So I just wanted to say that God has different omnifarious qualities, amen. Amen. God bless you. Yes, uh, Darren. And then we'll go to Esther. Actually, that was Declan. <laughs> okay, yeah, I want that. to add to James about what he said. That's like about when he said about that he he create a, he creates us and other stuff. I wanted to add to it that why would he create us if he does not love us? So if he creates us. He expects us to worship him because he's only one God, and that is the one true God. God bless you. If God doesn't love us, why would he create us? So you are, you are born, you are living, you are alive because God loves you. 
God has a purpose for you. He has a purpose for you. That's why what God created you. God bless you. Great contribution, James and, and Declan. Yes, Darren, and then we'll go to Esther. I wanted to say that when Declan was saying that he, he wants us to worship him, now actually, before the New Testament, God actually didn't demand this of every single human being in the world. He only wanted this of the Israelites. who, and, and those people were from the descendants of Abraham. That means that only Abraham's descendants were supposed to worship him. I mean that only Abraham's descendants too were going to be, were going to have a chance to go to heaven. That's what I wanted to say. God bless you for throwing another light to it. God richly bless you. Great contribution. Yes, uh, Miss Esther. Um, so the ice and water, ice is just water, but in a solid form. And I just, I just remembered that my brother did, um, he did a project with something called Ublek. And Ublek is a non-Newtonian fluid. So it has like properties of both liquid and solid. So if you like, let's say you hold it, right? then it's going to be like liquid. It's going to like drip out of your hands, right? Mm -hmm. And if you punch it or you squeeze it, it's going to be like hard. Mm. It will feel like solid. So this is the same thing with ice, but it's just like different. Like if you freeze water in a freezer because of how cold it is, it can freeze into ice. And if you just leave it out, um, out like let's say in the sun, it can just melt. So that's what I just wanted to point out. Amen. Great contribution, great contribution. So precious ones at home, that is another experiment that you can do to help you understand the Trinity, the God, God in three persons, the one true God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And the experiment that you can practice throughout the week is using the ice, water, and also getting a, a small um, boiling water, pour it hot water. And then you can also use the experiment that Esther just shared with us, right? You can try it all, but remember, as you do it at home, remember, it teaches you about what? God in three persons. Great contribution, Esther. God bless you. We'll go to uh, Benedict. And actually, kind of branch off to of Darren's comment. He actually doesn't really, God actually doesn't really force you to worship anyone. And that ties back into how God loves you. Cause God didn't love you, He would he, it would be strict demands. But because God loves you so much, you have maybe like Ruth who choose to choose to worship one true God or the other people who worship Moab. God bless you, Benny. God bless you for your contribution. Yes, James. Yeah, I wanted to like piggyback off what Benedict said. As a matter of fact, God doesn't need us to worship Him. Because in the in the Bible, God says that He can even command stones to worship Him. Our worship is just acknowledging God for who, who He is, what He is. It's our form of gratitude to God. But He doesn't need it. And what's interesting is of all the things that He said that um, He'll make stones worship Him. Stones are inanimate objects. Stones are what is used to create buildings. Stones are something that we disregard, that we kick to the side of the road. So God is saying that what you disregard, what you don't like, what you, what you don't want, he can use that for his good. Amen. 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 God doesn't, what, needs, our, he doesn't want, he doesn't really need us, right, to praise him and to worship him. But when you do, he what? He what? He accepts it. He receives it. The Bible says that what? He dwells uh, in his praise. He dwells what? When you give God a quality worship, his presence comes down, right? It means that precious ones, if we adopt the habit of worshiping God, the presence of God will always dwell with you. So sing some songs and begin to worship God. Tell God, it's just like, Telling mommy and daddy good stuff like, oh, mommy, you're so pretty. Oh, daddy, I love when you wear this. The things, the nice things we say to our parents and ourselves and our friends, these are the same things God, God expects you to say, say it to God, right? Truly from your heart, say them to God and God's presence will come down. And when it comes down, God doesn't visit us and just go and you leave you nothing. When God visits, he visits you. 
and then he leaves something with you. So let us try as much as possible to learn the habit of worshiping him and praising his name. Fantastic. Daron, Declan, Hans, uh -uh. we'll go with Daron and go to Declan and then Benedict. Okay, I wanted to add to what James said about the fact that God doesn't need us to worship him and what he said. I wanted to say that God, he, the only reason why he likes worship is because it makes him feel good. In fact, I think that is the only reason why he called David a man after his own heart. Because David, he wrote over half of the Psalms. And then most of them are filled with worship. He's always worshiping God. He's always telling God how good he is. And what makes it even easier is the fact that it's all true. God bless you. Amen. God, damn. God bless you. Um, thank you for throwing it. King David loved to worship God. If you look in the Bible, King David was not um, perfect, right? He made so many mistakes, right? In the Bible, right? But through it all, he still loved God. God used him to do so many great things, right? So, Precious ones, as I said earlier, on, let us develop the habit of praising and worshiping God for his presence to come upon us, okay? God richly bless you. Now, uh, Declan. Um, I want to add to what Don and James said. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is what I wanted to add. That worship time in about 11 o'clock to, um, to um, in the last and in this Sunday, which one person an elder said this before worship that God doesn't need anyone to worship Him. He can even command stones to worship Him. The chairs that you are sitting on, even that you were, even the dress that you are wearing, you can He can command anything about anyone. So if you just think, say, oh, the Lord will not get his glory. I'm the guy, guy. Um, you just, the Lord will say, say, okay, so you stones worship me already. Then the Lord, will, then the stones will have to worship him. Even the chest and the, even the, even the chest and everything. And also the Israelites, I'm speaking about worship, the Israelites worshiped an idol. There, is, there, is, there are two things. And there are difference between God, the one true God and God, and just a normal God. The normal God is not a good, that one true God. The normal God is an idol. No one is a God. Nothing can be a God and nothing will be a God. What about the actual God? Right? So, but then God, but so the Israelites worshiped an idol that they could see and touch. That was mm -hmm. only because they didn't trust Moses. But then when Moses went up the hill and told God that they can't complain and other stuff, there is a God provided for every single one of it. When, but then still, they worshipped an idol made out of gold that they could see and touch. So would you think that now, I'm thinking that, would you think that the Lord would provide for them again? Sure he would, but then, sure he would, but then not that much. You not trust you, not that much. Okay. As my father okay. usually says that if you don't say, if you say, say, you're going to do this tonight, and then you don't do it the next day, up to a week, and other stuff, and about a one month, how, do you, how does he know that you're going to do it today? God bless you for your contribution. Darren, you want to add to what your brother is saying? Yep. Okay. Then we come to Benedict. I thought to say that the Israelites, I think something was wrong to them. I don't want to be insulted them or anything. <laughs> but this is a God who parted the Red Sea. He made snakes bite you, and then just by looking at the snake, you are healed. Snakes, poisonous snakes in the desert. Then he did all these miracles. He provided manna, heavenly food. And I'm, I want to taste it, heavenly food. Food that is from heaven. I want to test it, and these people are complaining against it. They were always complaining, and now I understand why God wanted to destroy them. But because of His good name, He didn't do that. And God after that, He sent you. another son. I don't know how <laughs> He sent the son to come and die for us after He'd seen all these things that people had done. Good. You don't understand, but you see, 
He is the merciful God. He's the all loving God, right? He is the all loving God. So with all that the Israelites did, right? God still would love them. That what all after that in the New Testament, he sent his only son to come die for us, to save us, to wash us and cleanse us. And now you and I are saved. So our loving God, our merciful God, our God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit, God in three persons, the package. Oh, we serve a living God. Yes, Benedict. And then we come to James. And I have to kind of come back to where Declan said a while ago, well, God, God, God loves you. Could it come in three packages? I, here's how I see it. When you sin, God pulls you back up. Like when you fall into the hole I was talking about last time, God's always going to be there to pull you back up. Jesus' blood cleaned you from your sins. Once you're ready and you hunger for the Holy Spirit and God really gives it to you in full power, it comes to stay with you but it brings gifts like prophesying and preaching and that's why god came to moses and that stuff to bring the ten commandments to the israelites when they're starting to sin because god wants to be known and he wants to bring as many people as he wants with him so satan doesn't get the best of this his own creation god bless you benedict thank you great contribution yes james and then i'll come to Joel. Auntie Nina, when Darren said that he doesn't know what's wrong with the Israelites, he should have clarified that he meant the ancient Israelites, not the Israelites of today. We're not trying to start World War III on this show. Anyway. <laughs> okay, okay. I meant the ancient Israelites, like the they one did. in Moses' time. <laughs> Thank the you. great prophet Moses' time. Thank you. We've been happy with this clan. Yeah. Okay, what I also wanted to say is that if you look at the Israelites, they had many different names for God. And one of them was El Rahum Vehanun, which means that the merciful and gracious God. So mm -hmm. since we're talking about the merciful God, you know, I mean, literally look at the Israelites. They have Abba Father, El Shaddai. They have all sorts of different names, but they specifically chose to name one of the names to be God, the grace, the compassionate and merciful. So I just wanted to throw that out. God bless you. Great contribution. Yes, Joel. Yeah, I don't know what James, um, what James says. Um, yes, the Israelite um, did have a very good history with God, but sometimes like, they have ups and downs with God. Sometimes they'll be worshiping idols and then their kings will be bad. And then it, it teaches us like the punishments of what what's good and like what's bad and stuff like that and it teaches us the kings of the past and like what they did wrong or what they did that was good and how they helped the israelites or how they didn't help the israelites amen 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 joel god richly bless you i was just thinking that after all that god did the all loving god <coughs> excuse me after all that he did for them they still the left property that they had like jewels and stuff they still collected they felt like there is other god apart from the one true god it was just hard for me to believe and if you relate it back in our lives right now it's pretty much um equivalent to just Precious ones, we not showing gratitude to God, right? Because look at where they were in Egypt suffering. Look at what the Egyptians did to them, right? To these Israelites. They did so many, so many horrible things to them. And God delivered them. Look at Moses. What Moses has to go through to take them out of Egypt through the promised land as they were traveling through the promised land. And then now, they were calling Moses actually your God. This is a God that has delivered you. And then as they were going, if things don't go right for them, then it is Moses' God. And then when the manner of food came down, then is what? It is our God. So you could see here that there were ups and downs, as Joel was saying, about a heart that didn't show gratitude, right? Having an attitude of gratitude is a very important thing for us children to learn that what we need to show gratitude. 
we need to appreciate what God does for us. We need to appreciate what God do for us, right? Because if you don't, it's pretty much like, well, I'm entitled to it. Yeah, it's just like somebody handed over something to you and you don't say thank you, right? Every day is a gift to us. Every morning when you wake up and you can open your eyes and you can walk, it is a gift, right? Therefore, you need to say thank you. You need to have that heart of saying, Father, I thank you for taking me through the night and I'm alive. Hallowed be unto your name. It is good to show what appreciation. We need to have a heart that is forward, an attitude of gratitude. Yes, Benedict. I just want to say that you always have to be grateful because it will all come down to God. Let's take the Israelites. Well, yeah, Moses, for example. They first used to live in Mesopotamia, but then God told them to go to Canaan. And then from Canaan, since there was like food shortage and like droughts and that type of stuff, they had to go to Egypt to get their food. But while they were there and they were like cool to the Egyptians, like, yo, what's up? But then the Egyptians, they're getting too... The king of Egypt thought they were getting too powerful, the pharaoh, so they enslaved them. But without God, they would still be there. And they would still be part of that Egyptian colony. And that's why you always have to have God in your life. Because without God, they would have never been able to successfully come back and go to Canaan. The land, God, where they first reside. So come back to God. So we've got to have the attitude of gratitude. And the heart of gratitude and attitude. Thank you for sharing with us. The, um, we'll go to Darren, then come to James. I wanted to say that what Benedict was saying reminded me of a scripture um, of John chapter 1, verse 3. It says that through him all things were made. Nothing was made without him. Meaning that what Benedict was saying, if if God, if there was no God, there was no, there will be no us right now. Nothing would be there, like absolutely nothing. And please, before um before we go to James, I wanted to say in the verse four, in, it says, "In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind." That means that the if if in Him was life, first of all, if He created us, we would still die. We would have been dead before He created us. But then since he, have give, since he has given us the breath of life, um, this week we are saying about there is life in the dry bones. And since this week we have, we have got the life, and since we have, we have got life, we can live forever. That's why they call it life. We can live forever. We can live forever. God bless you. Yes, I'm James. So when... um. Benedict said that Abraham lived in Mesopotamia and he moved to Canaan. That showed, and he said also Canaan had droughts and stuff, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, right? Mm -hmm. That's what he said? Okay. Yeah. So that, like I said, that shows about Abraham's faith in God. Because first things first, his name was Abram, and he was worshiping idol gods. And if you look back in history at Mesopotamia, Mesopotamia was in the Fertile Crescent, which was the land between the Tigris and the Euphrates River, and made many civilizations like Babylon, Egypt, and Persia, they were they started somewhere around that Fertile Crescent. So for him to move to a completely different god, to a completely different land, that even wasn't like that as fertile as the Fertile Crescent, because the name literally says Fertile Crescent. And that just shows about his faith in God. I also wanted to say that God is, he shows his power in the mm -hmm. Bible. When Jesus, you see, one thing about Jesus is that Jesus is the mirror of God. Everything mm -hmm. he does in the Bible reflects off of God's true nature. And um, when he was um, doing, feeding the 5,000 people, with five loaves of bread and two fishes. That was actually very interesting because my dad was preaching and he mentioned that some of the numbers in the Bible have complete, have, have like different meanings. So five was the meaning for grace, meaning the five loaves of bread and the two fishes also meant union. So when you add five plus two, what do you get? You get seven and seven also mean complete perfection. So when um, God, then Jesus actually uh, multiplied the five loaves 
headed two fish. He was invoking God's perfection and completeness. He was invoking God's grace and God's union with mankind. Amen. 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 Great contribution. I am really enjoying my lesson this afternoon. I hope you are doing the same. We are talking about God in three person, the Trinity, the Trinity. We used eyes, we used water, and then we use hot water to kind of experiment, to kind of walk everyone through about the Trinity, right? Um, as we all know, sometimes it can, that topic, God the Father, God the Son, God the, and the Holy Spirit, sometimes it's very confusing for children. And that's why we use the ice, the water, and then hot water to represent the gas that come up when it evaporates. When the vapor comes out, we use that as gas to represent the Holy Spirit. Then the eyes as well, the God, the Father, and the liquid as the God, the Son, which is Jesus Christ, to kind of represent the Trinity. So that well, because we use water a lot, right? So anytime you see these three things, you will be able to relate more to the Trinity, God in three persons. And then we have also gotten to know that our God is the omnipresent, omniscient, and omnipotent God, as um, um, James said. He's the all-powerful God. Our God, too, some of the children here also threw light on the loving God. So we say that God is loving because if you look at what the Israelites, when Moses was taking the children from Egypt and when they were on the promised land and, and, and some were so, were doing their own thing, some even created their own God, small God, apart from the supreme being, they, they, God still what, didn't reject them. God still took them in. He is the loving God. And he is the merciful God. So precious was, this is the topic we're talking about this afternoon. Um, yes, Daryl, you have something to say? Yeah, when you when you were speaking, it reminded me of the experiment again, since we well drifted a little bit. That's and okay. I have two things to say. First of all, when you think about the Holy Spirit being like gas, it, remind, it reminds you of smoke, which reminds me most of the time of fire. And fire, it reminded me of the day of Pentecost, which Hallelujah. then the Holy Spirit came and dwelled on these people like tongues of fire. And then we move on to Jesus. You know how you need water to live. If you go three days without water, you're dead. That's it. End of story. Well, Jesus too came to die for us. Without him, he said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That means that without water, we are dead. There is nothing. You can't do anything. God bless you, Darren. Yes, Benedict, and then James. One thing, one thing I realized about the Holy Spirit that comes with the Trinity is the Holy Spirit, like, is like fire. And fire catches on to flammable substance easy, easily. And that's why it leads moves on and on to each person and leaves them other people when the Pentecost came so all around the world. God bless you, Benedict. Your line was breaking. We didn't hear much what you said, but um you can share with us again when 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 the line gets better. I will go to James. Like the expression says, wherever there's smoke, there's fire. So what's in, you see what's interesting about fire is that there's three things needed to make fire. You need heat, you need fuel, and you need oxygen. Oxygen is your air. So God as a living, that's actually interesting because it's just like the Trinity. The Trinity is made of three things. God has three main aspects as omnipotence, presence, and omniscience. And also his omnificence, which is four, but we would mainly, it's three things. So we meet three things to make fire, three part aspects of the Trinity and three aspects of God himself. Amen. Amen. I also wanted to say, uh, I forgot what I was going to say. Okay. Esther, you want to share anything with us before we yes, go to um, Benedict? Sure. 
So I just wanted to say like um that some people might not understand what the Trinity is. Like mostly like the younger kids. Like they might think that the Trinity is like three three different people, but they're all the same person. Like the experiment that you showed us. Amen. 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 God bless you. Benedict, and then we come to James. To repeat what I said last time. Well, the Holy, just like Darren said it now. The Holy Spirit is like fire and it catches on fire. So once it leaves something, it, the thing is still burning unless it has water or has water. Just like in the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit was going around with the disciples and the other people. But once the Holy Spirit leads to go to, to touch somebody else, it leaves that person with gifts. And that's why they were able to speak tongues and go and prophesy and teach the word of God to many nations, just what Jesus sent them to do for. God bless you. God bless you. Yes, um, James. I remember what I was going to say now. So what I was going to say is um, like how Darren said water. Jesus also says that he's the living water, which when he's, I think he said that by the woman by the well. And also... When, the, when he said fire, Benedict said fire. Fire burns. And if God is the fire, and if he's also the living water, that means only the living water can put out his fire. So that means if the devil is always coming towards you, God can burn the devil, and no water in the entire world will be able to put that out. So when God on your side, who can be against you? Great contribution. I have a quick question, though. Hmm. So... When Jesus came to earth to die for us, when he was born as a human baby and he grew and he was fulfilling his mission, his mission was to come and he would die for our sins. When Jesus, God the Son being Jesus, came to earth, where was the Holy Spirit and God the Father? Where were, where were they? Yes, there are. I have to say that hey, the Holy the Holy Spirit was still in Jesus. It's just that when he was tested, that was when um, the Holy Spirit came fully upon him. Then God the Father was still up there. Hey. 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 Wow. Hey. Oh, that's a hard question. Yeah, let's let's brainstorm. When Jesus came on earth, remember the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, they are one. The one true God. Now, one of the section came in human baby on earth, right, to fulfill a mission. Now, while he was here, Darren is saying that the Holy Spirit was with him. But what? He, he came fully when what? He, he went to be with the Lord. And then what? He sent the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Okay. And he said God was up there. Okay. Up where? Sarah, we'll come back to and I asked you where. Please, I'm trying <laughs> to explain. I want to. You want to explain? Okay, okay explain God. yourself. Explain okay. yourself. So the one that I was missing was God, since I never fully, because I couldn't actually find an answer. But now I found the answer. I think okay. when they are one, when Jesus said, I and my father are one, God was on earth then. You see, but then God was still on it, but then he was also in heaven because the Bible says that we just like um, James said that God is omnipresent. He is everywhere. I mean that he was also still in heaven. He was everywhere. So that one was the easiest actually. Much better though, much better. Okay, we'll go to James and then come to Declan. I just wanted to say that number one, God was in heaven when Jesus came to earth and was born through Mary and the Holy Spirit came. Actually, the Holy Spirit was with Jesus because it was the Holy Spirit that fell upon Mary and that helped him, that helped her to um, give birth to Jesus. So in a way, you could say that Jesus was the Son and the Holy Spirit, but Jesus doesn't fully have the Holy Spirit till he's baptized and it falls upon him in the, it falls upon him in the shape of a dove. So first it falls upon Mary, falls upon him. Lots of falling here. God bless you, James, for throwing light on that too. Yes, who else? When Jesus came to earth, on earth, born in a human baby, where was the Holy Spirit and God? Precious ones at home, what do you think? Yes, Benedict. And then we go mm -hmm. to Declan. 
But honestly, I think that when Jesus came out as a baby, the Holy Spirit was with Jesus. But he hasn't really, he hasn't unlocked its full potential yet. Because once you get baptized, that's one. And once you burn, well, there's two ways to get the, well, there's the one way, but you can get it either or. You can really yearn, yearn and God will give it to you, and then you get baptized, or you get baptized, and then you yearn, and God will give it to you. Either or, I, the Holy Spirit was with Jesus, but he was still a baby. So it was with Jesus, like it's with all of us, but we need to unlock his full potential. We want to get baptized, or before we get baptized, and we yearn. And that's when, boom, the TNT goes off, and we're in full strength. But God, he is always with Jesus, guiding him, because three and one. So if one is not there, there's no more trinity. So I think all of them were with Jesus in the beginning. But the Holy Spirit is exceptional, because you need to be baptized to fully unlock the full power. God bless you. Great contribution. Uh, Declan. I agree with what Darren and uh, Darren Benedict and James said, but then, but then I wanted to say this: that one thing, God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and God are the same. If they are, if one is there, the three of them are there. If one is on heaven, if one is in heaven, the three of them are in heaven. But then especially God, he has the power to be everywhere at once. Doesn't mean so. <laughs> but then it doesn't mean so does the Holy Spirit. So that means that wherever the Holy Spirit was on earth, and then God was on earth, and Jesus was on earth, or that when Jesus was born another time. And I wanted to also say this that that like. The Holy Spirit isn't like, he doesn't just come randomly upon Jesus. So that means that there had mm. to be something specific about, about Mary. That, that is why God chose Mary to become, to, to give birth to Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. Yes, Darren and then James. Okay, when Declan, oh, wait, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> okay, James, come and maybe Declan will remember. Declan literally said what I was going to say. You you asked us a trick question. Mm -hmm. I was going to say that every, like, Jesus was God and the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit was everywhere. Also, when um Declan, which one's the Declan? Which one's there? I think Declan's the smaller one. Okay. Declan mm -hmm. said that, um, what did he say? Uh -huh. Declan said that there must have been something special about Mary. The reason why she, um, God chose Mary is because it was fulfilled in the prophecy. Everything Jesus, everything Jesus did in his life was prophesied ahead of time. So the choosing of Mary and um, when Jesus was supposed to die, everything was just following according to scripture and God's will and his prophecy that he revealed to Isaiah. Isaiah, Isaiah not Elijah, Isaiah, okay. God bless you. Now I have another follow-up question. How does this God show himself as three? How does God show himself as three? Right? Think about it. How does he show himself? Remember, we've already talked about um, God in three persons. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They are in one. We also talked about Jesus being on earth. Where were the other two? Now we want to know, God, how does he show himself in three persons? These are some of the questions that um, kids ask. Because what? It's still, sometimes it's a little bit hard for children to comprehend. So some of these questions will help them. How does God show himself in three persons? Yes, Darren. I wanted to say that God shows himself in three persons. Yeah. Wait. Uh, why are you talking to me, Oda? Oh, the, okay, that clan. No. Okay, so I wanted <laughs> to say that God shows himself in three forms by one. At the time of the Old Testament, God was God himself. Mm -hmm. Number two. At the time that it was in the New Testament, in Matthew 30, 
through the gospel, and God chose himself as a person who was Jesus. Mm -hmm. Number three, at the time Jesus ascended and died and died, Jesus um, never died. Yes, at the time died. Jesus died and ascended onto heaven, the Holy Spirit took control. So now the Holy Spirit is wherever. That means that you might know. You might not know, but then the Holy, you are just breathing the Holy Spirit. Sometimes I even ask them that, what, how come that we breathe the Holy Spirit? How come that we breathe the Holy Spirit that then we don't get it in our, in our, how, in our lives? So we can breathe and breathe and breathe freely, thinking, say, thinking that you are, you are just free. And you are, you are just sitting down, but then when you see, say, oh, I'm breathing the Holy Spirit, but then yet I've not got it. There might be many Christians, as a matter of fact, many Christians who know the Holy Spirit and actually breathe and actually say, say oh, the Holy Spirit is here. So very soon you might even see some people just making some inventions about seeing where the Holy Spirit is. <laughs> and, then when you see, and then when you see it, then you just detect it, the then just so that the Holy Spirit can come in you, you, you just, you go inside the Holy Spirit. Thank you. God all. bless you. God bless you for your contribution. Yes, James. Declan, uh, Darren, keep forgetting. And then I come to Joe. I think Declan Joe said what I was going to say again. But really, how God shows himself as three is when he shows himself as one. Which is what he said when in the, the New Testament and the Old Testament and everything like that. One thing I want to say is that for those who are having trouble understanding it, don't have trouble understanding it. Christianity is the only religion where one plus one plus one is still one, meaning that three is still one and one is still three. So an easy way, another way to um relate to that is let's take me for example. I'm one person, but when I go to school, I'm a student. When I come back home, I'm my mom's son, and I'm also my sister's brother, but I'm still one person. So it's just one person or one being with just three different aspects. God bless you for your contribution. Yes, Joel. I forgot what I was gonna say, sorry. Ah, uh, <laughs> that's okay, that's okay. Yes, Darren. I wanted to say that it's just really a very small side comment, actually. But I wanted to say that to make this a bit more logical, when you think about it, it isn't really one plus one plus one. I think it's one times one times one, because it will still make one. No matter the amount of ones you add, it will still make one. Yeah, you can make, yeah, that one, I get it. But here is not one times one times one to be one. This is beating the law of math. One plus one plus one is three, right? Three in person, right? So God, the Father God, is God in three person, right? Now, before we even go on, Darren, before you come up with your, you come in with your contribution, who is the Holy Spirit at all? Who? Who is the Holy Spirit? Who is he? Yes, um, Benedict. Well, the Holy Spirit is God, and it's a different form of God, and the Holy Spirit is the thing that Jesus left, well, the person that Jesus left, as soon as he died, and he went to the disciples, and he ascended, the Holy Spirit is the one taking control, giving people gifts, and sending people out to the world to preach and prophesy and teach the word of God. Thank you. Yes, Darren, who is the Holy Spirit? Okay, so I find this really weird since yesterday we actually did Bible study on it. Um, and our presiding Sunday elder, school, you meant. Sunday school, yes. And our presiding elder for Father's Day told us that um, the Holy Spirit is our advocate and the Holy Spirit isn't an it. It is a he, actually, or a person. Yes, the Holy Spirit is a person, not an It's also an, an advocate, which is basically one that when you pray, God, the Holy Spirit will be like, okay, you know he will do this in the future. This is good. He will help God so that when you pray, what you want, he will give it to you. Either that or you he intercede on our yeah, behalf. He's our intercessor. Yeah. Yes, yeah, exactly. God bless you, Darren. 
Amen. I think that everyone knows um, this thing, but that the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit is a part of the Trinity. And actually, when you think about this, there's something similar about the three in one. Mm -hmm. It isn't that they are. It isn't that they are one. There is only one person, and they can't. There can be at everywhere, but then everyone, every. And everyone, God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit, that they are all powerful. Jesus could do miracles. God to just, just rise up, turn, uh, turn down into the air right now. And the Holy Spirit can be everywhere at once. So all of them have one particular thing. The Trinity, Trinity, three is a very strong number, as I mm. always say sometimes. Three is a very strong number. So... So sometimes when you use the number three, it can also mean the Trinity. God bless you. God bless you. Yes, James. I remember, yeah. I keep forgetting what I'm going to say. First things first, like um, Eklin said, Trinity is three, which comes from the Greek, Greek root trias, which means a set of three. Also, what I wanted to say is that the Holy Spirit is actually the best of both the God, the Father, and God, the Son, because he said that um, the Holy Spirit is our comforter, which is also what God does, and he is all powerful, just like um, God, God and Jesus, and um, the disciples had to wait in Jerusalem for 30 days just so that they could be filled with the Holy Spirit. This is interesting because you look at the Old Testament, God comes and creates the world, and then the New Testament, he sends his son to die, but we are now in the new New Testament, the, the age after the New Testament, when God sends his Holy Spirit as a, no, not a replacement, as himself, he sends himself back again to help the disciples, to fill the disciples, to work with the disciples, and to use the disciples to preach the gospel to all nations. So the Holy Spirit, is God. You can't say the, like God, the Father, Holy Spirit, like are separate people. They are separate people, but the same. Like, like the, the Bible says, for my ways are not your ways. Meaning what, what God understands, we don't understand. That's why Antonina had to use an experiment of, of hot water, just so we can understand what God deems the most basic thing, because what we are doing is defining his existence. So the Holy Spirit, like I said, is the best of both God, the Father and God, the Son, and he is God, the Father and God, the Son. God bless you. God bless all of you, James, Joel, Esther, Darren Declan, and Benedict. Now we are talking about God in three persons. Darren, you have something to say. Okay, you can go ahead. Yes, I don't mean to be mean or anything like that, but I don't think that the Holy Spirit is the best. That, and this is because of the fact that Jesus came to die for us. Without, if he hadn't died, we'd all be ashes right now. We'd be like fire. Everything would be nothing, actually. And then I think the Holy Spirit too is a bit partial because sometimes he, he decides who to come upon. He doesn't say, okay, that guy is next on the road, so I'm going to come upon <laughs> He decides, okay, okay, no, the, the one at the back, yeah, I like him better than the one in front. Despite the one in front being the one who's actually preaching. That's your assumption, right? Yep. Okay. Okay, let me clarify. Yes, He's not I'm, the best I'm, of both. <laughs> He has the best attributes of both. Right. Okay, okay, okay. That makes more sense now. Just to, okay. add, just to add to what James said, even though I haven't raised my hand, sorry, by the way. Um, just to add to what James said, just to add to what James said, it's, it's, uh, my dad was telling me, was telling me the whole entire church about a story that he not the last um, he not the last one time they were preaching and they were, everyone was in the spirit. One guy, except one guy. And then that guy was way at the back. But then what Don said was true because the Holy Spirit just went up on that guy. The Holy Spirit just went up on that guy and then it moved to the person all the way to the front. <laughs> just like that. <laughs> the guy was thick okay. tall, like huge. Sure, you match that yeah. to good with it. And that should let you that know that serve the all-powerful God. We serve all-powerful God. Now, precious ones, we've been talking about the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now, how can somebody be saved through Jesus Christ? How can somebody be saved? 
Thank Tanina, you. before we leave the um God the Holy Spirit thing, can I say one last thing? Yeah, yeah. God the Holy Spirit is still with us um today. Our apostle in New York, he um he sent, told us a story that when they were doing missions and they went to India, there were some people he was preaching that God is all powerful, and some people who are worshiping other spirits were able to fly up into the air. And they were kind mm -hmm. of challenging him and saying, like, if your God's so powerful, why can't you do that? But when Apostle and the others said, in, they invoked the Holy Spirit, and then that guy came falling down. So the mm. Holy Spirit is still with us today. Amen. The Holy Spirit is still with us, and he is the all-powerful. Our God is so strong, so powerful. It reminds me of this. My God is so big. Yeah. So strong and so mighty, there is nothing my God cannot do. And the children added, for you. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there is nothing my God cannot do. The mountains I hate. The rivers are here, the stars are here, and the work Oh, my God is so big, so strong, and so mighty. There is nothing my God cannot do for you. Now. We come back to my question. How can somebody be saved by Jesus Christ? How can someone be saved through Jesus Christ? The floor is open. Yes, they're on. Then we go to Declan and then we come to Benedict and then we come to James. Okay, so I know what Declan was going to say, so I'm going to say it first. <laughs> okay. Can. Okay. I think of all the questions, this one's the easiest because there's a verse that I know. When you read, Romans chapter 10, verse 9 to 10, it says that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Verse 10, for it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. You see, so this is Apostles Paul, Apostles, Apostle Paul speaking of. And, and he knew firsthand what, what could actually happen when he believed. And so that is how you can be saved through Jesus Christ, because that was what you said. That is with your mouth. Amen. Um, Declan, I'm sure your brother has said it all. You want to add no. something? <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Wow. Go ahead. Okay, so um, I also wanted to add to what Don said was that the mouth is a very powerful thing. <laughs> the mouth is a very powerful Every word that you see in the Bible, it says that for your every word, every word that you say to be accounted in the in the day of judgment. So if you say a bad word, hopefully say, hopefully that you 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 just you just repent to God because trust me, I don't want to go to hell. And by the way, your your mouth is a very powerful um thing, as I said. In fact, your tongue. If you say with your tongue that from now, if you say the name Jesus, demons shall just pass away. Even though demons are right here, you're looking, you're looking, oh, there might be a demon here. Each time you say Jesus, you just hear, you just hear a ringtone that the demons are just going. And by the way, I also wanted to add to what Don said that, um, to your question, that the Bible gives you the leading to receive Salvation that comes by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. Um, I wanted to say this last two weeks, actually the last time that you met, the last, the last three weeks. Three. Yeah, yeah, God bless him. Yes, Benedict and then James. Mm -hmm. I just want to say that to be saved, well, well how to be saved? It's just, it's pretty simple. You just ask Jesus to be a born and savior. Well, truly, except that he is God. And ask Jesus so, you can, so he can be your Lord and savior. And you're saved.
God bless you, Benedict. Yes, James. Declan said what I was going to say again. This is the third time in a row, man. Okay. I was also going to say <laughs> that the Bible says that um, life and death love lies in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So meaning that life and death. See, what's interesting is what the Bible says is the tongue. It doesn't say your mouth. It says the tongue, meaning that if you see um, in the medieval times when you're going to get punished, people would cut your tongue and you would never be able to talk. So as I am talking to you, it is because of the, my tongue that I'm using to be able to talk to you. So life and death lies in the power of the tongue. What I also wanted to say is that we can get salvation through Jesus Christ. Like Declan also said, he's stealing all my points, man. He also said that um okay i forgot what he, was, what he said but what i'm going to say is that the bible says that i am the way the truth and the life that's what jesus is saying so he is the way what's a way like when you're when you have navigation it's telling you where to go but the way is the road that you're crossing to that destination the truth is the opposite of what's false meaning that god will only tell you what's true like our parents They'll tell you what's the truth, even though you don't want to hear it. They'll tell it to you, all right? So that, that's the truth. And the life is the opposite of death. Like, what makes everything alive? So Jesus, oh, so like how we have the Holy Trinity. He's the way, truth, and life. Again, so many things that are threes, what's aspects of God. So God is the way to heaven, the truth, which is his word that we can, that we can use to guide us in our life and the life that we are actually living amen so when we the bible says that that you speak with your mouth and believe in your heart you can just say anything but if you don't believe what you were saying it's worthless so you accepting jesus christ as your lord and personal savior means you you acknowledge he exists and if you believe he exists like acknowledging that he exists and just saying oh you're alive all right but believing that he exists is what helps you get your salvation because once you believe something you love that thing and once no once you believe something you know it's there once you know it's there you respect it once you respect it you admire or love it. and then when you love it you do what that person tell or that thing tells you to do amen god bless you james god bless you precious ones this afternoon um darren you have something to say please say it and then we wrap it up Okay, uh, when, when we we're talking about believing in the tongue and the power of the tongue, it reminded me of Isaiah chapter 54, verse 17. It says, no open forth the gates you will prevail and you will refute every tongue that accuses you. And the, if, I, if, the pro, if God himself had, had the time to say, or to say that you will refute everything that accuses you, that means that there are a lot of things that accuse you. But because, because you have the power to do so, you be able to you be able to refute all of it because the Bible says no one forged against you. The, 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 when you continue to read, it says that, and this is the vindication from me, declares the Lord. But before that, it says this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. That means that this is what you gain when you believe in Christ. This is what you you gain. Just to add to what Dor says again. No, 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 just to add to what Dor said for my last um, final comment. I would like to say that in Isaiah 55, in the same Isaiah chapter 55, verse 11, it says, So is my word that goes out of my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but to accomplish what I desire and achieve the heaven for which I sense it. So that means that every word that the Lord says, it shall surely come. He knows the end from even the beginning. So you are sure that if you are playing soccer, you might you know, say, oh, the Lord has already won the war. That is because he knows the, the Lord has already won the game. But that yeah. is because the, he knows <laughs> what is going to happen and what has happened. And he never forgets that. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Words are powerful. Words are powerful. God richly bless all of you. James, we may have to continue next week. Is it regarding because you said it first? But hey, the wonderful thing about the real God is that he is alive. That is so wonderful, right? Jesus came to our what? 
Jesus can be our savior. He is our savior. He is our friend. The Holy Spirit lives inside of us and he has given us life. We can know the deep love that what God has for us. We all know that. And I'm so glad that the God we serve is known to us as what? As the three in person, God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. This afternoon, we have learned something special. James, you may have to say last thing and then I sum it up, okay? Thank you. So when Declan was speaking, yes, it's Declan. When Declan was speaking about the word, I just wanted to say that my dad preached last week. He said about um, the priests and he said that the priests and the prophets were people who literally like spoke the word of God. So whenever they were going somewhere, they would say, thus says the Lord. They were the people who would they were the mediator between the people and God and whatever they were like God's messengers. So I just want to say that real quick. God bless you. God bless you. Precious one, we have learned this afternoon about the God in three persons. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. We said what? The eyes represent what? It's a solid. Water is used to make eyes, right? So eyes is God the Father. And then we use the water being liquid, the plain water, as God, what, the sun, which is Jesus. And we use the vapor or the steam of a hot water when it, it kind of evaporates, the vapor that comes out. We use that in the experiment as the gas. This water, I'm not, Antonina is not saying that Jesus is water and God the Father is ice and vapor is the Holy Spirit. That is not what it was. It is an ex experiment to kind of show us to understand. That is how I was able to learn that. And that is how I think it will be very easy for you to learn it. But so the experiment of water, ice, and vapor is, is, is pretty much an example to explain the concept, right? To explain the doctrine of the Trinity. And we have learned that, that they are all one. They are all one. And it is good that we know the father that we serve is one in one, in three person. Shall we pray as we bring our lesson to an end? Dear God, we thank you for this afternoon. We know that we cannot fully understand how great and wonderful you really are. But we thank you, God, for revealing yourself to us as Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Even though we are still what? Even though you are still what? One person. Help us, oh God, to learn more about you and the great love you have for us. Um, Father, we are so grateful unto you. We ask this in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We also want to Amen. wish all, Amen. all the children that are celebrating their birthday in the month of June. We say happy birthday to you. May the Lord grant you more and more um, years, healthy years uh, ahead of you. May God order your path and throw light on you until we see all of you again next week. Invite a friend and like it if you like the program. You can watch Kiss Down with Jesus on Facebook Live or COP USA, or you can also watch it on YouTube. And we also have another program for the little ones. We call it um, the Bedtime Story. It comes on Fridays at 8 p.m. Bedtime Story. It is for the ADS and below. So um, share the link, spread it around, and let Kate what watch it. We all need the word of God. We all need the word of God. May the Lord keep us all safe till we meet again next week. We love you all. Bye. Bye. We love all of you. So stay put, keep safe, and we'll